According to Wikipedia, typology in Christian theology and in biblical exegesis is a doctrine or theory concerning the relationship of the Old Testament to the New Testament. Typology is very useful for grasping truths about the Catholic faith because it is both at the same time simple and profound. Through typology, people, places, and events from the Old Testament are seen as a foreshadowing or a prefigurement of people, places, and events in the New Testament. Typology uses storytelling to deepen our understanding about the Catholic faith. And this is much like the approach that our Lord took to explaining truth, as he spoke in parables and in stories so that everyone could understand. Please listen prayerfully and open your hearts to see the typological prefigurements that lie waiting for us in the Old Testament. Before we examine how Martin Luther and his revolt were prefigured in the Old Testament by Jeroboam and his rebellion, I would like to offer an idea. The Old Testament contains the entire history of the Israelites. The Israelites were the Old Testament people of God. Their entire history, from their inception until their ending, is completely contained in the books of the Old Testament. Similarly, the New Testament is the entire history of the new people of God, the Catholic Church. The New Testament really contains our entire history from start to finish. However, the difference is that for the Israelites, their history is entirely recorded in the Bible. Our history is still being lived out. We are still in the New Testament, even though our history is not recorded entirely in the Bible. With that concept in mind, it becomes clear why Martin Luther would be prefigured in the pages of the Old Testament. If the Old prefigures the New, then events in the history of the Church would be prefigured by the Old Testament. It's not just people, places, and events from the pages of the books of the New Testament, but the actual history of our Church that comprises the actual New Testament. Now we are ready to look at how Martin Luther is prefigured in the Old Testament by Jeroboam. The story of Jeroboam is found primarily in the first book of Kings, chapter 11, verse 28, through the first book of King, chapter 14, verse 30, and also can be found in the second book of Chronicles, chapters 10 through chapter 13. Because of Solomon's unfaithfulness to the law of God, the Lord swore that he would take the kingdom of Israel and give it to another. With the heavy taxes and levies that King Solomon took from the kingdom of Israel, the Israelites were weary of the heavy yoke put upon them for the purpose of building the temple and expanding the kingdom. A man named Jeroboam led a group of Israelites to come before the new king Reboam, King Solomon's son, and ask the new king to lessen the burden that was placed upon them by Solomon. Reboam refused, and Jeroboam led ten tribes of Israel against the tribe of Judah. From the first book of Kings, chapter 11, verses 11 to 13. The Lord therefore said to Solomon, Because thou hast done this, and hast not kept my covenant and my precepts which I have commanded thee, I will divide and rend thy kingdom, and will give it to thy servant. Nevertheless, in, th in thy days I will not do it, for David thy father's sake, but I will rend it out of the hand of thy son. Neither will I take away the whole kingdom, 
but I will give one tribe to thy son for the sake of David my servant, and Jerusalem which I have chosen. And also from the first book of Kings, chapter 12, verses 3 and 4. And they sent and called him, and Jeroboam came, and all the multitude of Israel, and they spoke to Reboam, saying, Thy father laid a grievous yoke upon us. Now therefore do thou take off a little of the grievous service of thy father, and of his most heavy yoke, which he put upon us, and we will serve thee. And finally, from the first book of Kings, chapter 12, verses 14 through 20. And he, Reboam, spoke to them according to the counsel of the young men, saying, My father made your yoke heavy, but I will add to your yoke. My father beat you with whips, but I will beat you with scorpions. And the king condescended not to the people, for the Lord was turned away from him to make good his word, which he had spoken in the hand of Ahias the Silonite, to Jeroboam the son of Nabat. Then the people, seeing that the king would not hearken to them, answered him, saying, What portion have we in David, or what inheritance in the son of Isai? Go home to thy dwellings, O Israel. Now David took to thy own house. So Israel departed to their dwellings. But as for all the children of Israel that dwelt in the cities of Judah, Reboam reigned over them. The king Reboam sent Adoram, who was over the tribute, and all Israel stoned him and he died. Wherefore king Reboam made haste to get him up into his chariot, and he fled to Jerusalem. And Israel revolted from the house of David unto this day. And it came to pass, when all Israel heard that Jeroboam was come again, that they gathered in assembly and sent and called him, and made him king over all Israel. And there was none that followed the house of David, but the tribe of Judah only. After leading the ten northern tribes in rebellion against the tribe of Judah, Jeroboam became fearful that if the northern tribes of Israel were to go down to the temple in Judah and make the temple sacrifice, that their hearts would return to the Davidic kingdom. So to solidify his control and authority over the ten tribes of Israel, he changed their religion and instituted a new feast day to be celebrated. He also established new religious orders for his new religion, and not using the priests of the tribe of Levi. From the first book of Kings, chapter 12, verses 26 through 29. And Jeroboam said in his heart, Now shall the kingdom return to the house of David? If this people go up to offer sacrifices in the house of the Lord at Jerusalem, and the heart of this people will turn to their lord Reboam the king of Judah, and they will kill me and return to him. And finding out a device, he made two golden calves, and said to them, Go ye up no more to Jerusalem. Behold thy gods, O Israel, who brought thee out of the land of Egypt. And he set that one in Bethel, and the other in Dan. And from the first book of Kings, chapter 12, verses 31 through 33. And he made temples in the high places, and priests of the lowest of the people, who were not the sons of Levi. And he appointed a feast in the eighth month, on the fifteenth day of the month, after the manner of the feast that was celebrated in Judah. And going up to the altar, he did in like manner in Bethel to sacrifice to the calves which he had made. And he placed in Bethel priests of the high places which he had made. And he went up to the altar which he had built in Bethel on the fifteenth day of the eighth month, which he had devised of his own heart. And he ordained a feast to the children of Israel 
and went upon the altar to burn incense. During the reign of King Solomon, Jeroboam fled into Egypt because his rebellious plot was discovered by Solomon. The king of Egypt was Shishtak. During the reign of Jeroboam in the, t- in the ten northern tribes of Israel, King Shishak came to Jerusalem and overran the city. He left taking the most precious artifacts from the temple and the king's house. Second Book of Chronicles, chapter 12, verse 9. So Shishak, king of Egypt, departed from Jerusalem, taking away the treasures of the house of the Lord and of the king's house, and he took all with him and the golden shields that Solomon had made. Now there was constant war between King Reboam of Judah and King Jeroboam, king of the ten northern tribes. After King Reboam, the next king of, of Judah, King Abahi, fought to bring the ten lost tribes back into the covenant with God. 1 Book of Kings, chapter 14, verse 30. And there was war between Reboam and Jeroboam always. Before a large battle with the army of Jeroboam, King Abiah gave a rousing speech to the lost ten tribes. He entreats them to stop fighting against the people of God and return to the covenant of the Lord. The first book of Chronicles chapter 13. Therefore, God is the leader in our army, and his priests who sound with trumpets and resound against you. O children of Israel, fight not against the Lord, the God of your fathers, for it is not good for you. In the midst of the story of Jeroboam and the ten northern tribes, there is a narrative describing the death of Jeroboam's infant child. Jeroboam sent his wife to a prophet in the land of Judah to find out about the fate of his infant child. The first book of Kings, chapter 14, verse 17. And the wife of Jeroboam arose and departed and came to Tirsa. And when she was coming into the threshold of the house, the child died. Finally, it's worth noting that although in the kingdom of Judah all the kings were descendants of King David, Jeroboam's authority didn't last very long. His descendants had the throne taken from them, and new authorities arose in the ten northern tribes. From the first book of Kings, chapter 15, verses 28 and 29. So Basa slew him in the third year of Asa, king of Judah, and reigned in his place. And when he was king, he cut off all the house of Jeroboam. He left not so much as one soul of his seed, till he had utterly destroyed him, according to the word of the Lord, which he had spoken in the hand of Ahias the Silonite. Now that we have the Old Testament stories of Jeroboam in place, we can move on to the story of Martin Luther. Martin Luther and the Protestant Revolt are extremely complex. To analyze them thoroughly would require a video of considerable length. However, most knowledgeable Catholics have a basic understanding of Martin Luther and the Protestant Revolt. This video will seek to build upon that without going into too much detail. Martin Luther was born on November 10, 1483, in central Germany. Later, he was ordained a Catholic priest and also became a monk. He opposed certain abuses concerning the sale of indulgences, which were being sold to raise money for the construction of St. Peter's Basilica in Rome. He rebelled against the authority of the Pope 
and spearheaded the Protestant revolt. On October 31st, 1517, he nailed his famous 95 Theses to the door of a church and later refused to retract his assertions. He was later excommunicated by Pope Leo X. Martin Luther was a German professor of theology, composer, priest, monk, and a seminal figure in the Protestant Reformation. His refusal to retract all of his writings at the demand of Pope Leo X in 1520 and the Holy Roman Emperor Charles V at the Diet of Worms in 1521 resulted in his excommunication by the Pope and condemnation as an outlaw by the Emperor. In 1516, Johann Tetzel, a Dominican friar and a papal commissioner for indulgences, was sent to Germany by the Roman Catholic Church to sell indulgences to raise money to rebuild St. Peter's Basilica in Rome. The primary aspect of the Protestant Revolt, which solidified it in the hearts and minds of those who followed Luther, was his changing of doctrinal beliefs and new religious practices. Inside Protestantism, a new universal feast day was developed, and it's celebrated on October 31st. This feast day is called Reformation Day. To commemorate the day, Luther nailed his 95 theses on the door of the church. He introduced two new primary doctrines that were new to Christendom, sola fide, faith alone, and sola scriptura, scripture alone. Luther was especially opposed to the Holy Mass and was insistent that it is not a sacrifice. He also instituted a new form of priesthood, creating new ministers who aren't ordained in apostolic succession, as priests in the Catholic Church are. He condemned as idolatry the idea that the Mass is a sacrifice. His theology challenged the authority and office of the Pope by teaching that the Bible is the only source of divinely revealed knowledge from God, and opposed sacratolism by considering all baptized Christians to be a holy priesthood. That is why faith alone makes someone just and fulfills the law, he wrote. Reformation Day is a religious holiday celebrated on October 31st alongside All Hallows' Eve in remembrance of the Reformation. It is celebrated among various Protestants, especially by Lutheran and Reformed Church communities. In 1516 and 17, Johann Tetzel, a Dominican friar and papal commissioner for indulgences, was sent to Germany to raise money to rebuild St. Peter's Basilica in Rome. On October 31, 1517, Martin Luther wrote to Albrecht, Archbishop of Mainz and Magdeburg, protesting against the sale of indulgences. In May of 1527, during the early years of the Protestant Revolt, the city of Rome and the Vatican was sacked by mutinous troops of the Holy Roman Emperor Charles V. Priceless works of art and items of extremely rich historical significance were looted and or destroyed by the pillagers. Not only was the St. Peter's looted, but so were all the residences of the cardinals and prelates who lived in Rome. The sack of Rome on May 6, 1527 was a military event carried out by the mutinous troops of Charles V, Holy Roman Emperor, in Rome, then part of the Papal States. After the brutal execution of some 1,000 defenders of the papal capital and shrines, the pillage began. Churches and monasteries, 
as well as the palaces of prelates and cardinals, were looted and destroyed. Even pro-imperial cardinals had to pay to save their properties from the rampaging soldiers. Though Martin Luther himself was not in favor of it, some who considered themselves followers of Luther's Protestant movement viewed the papal capital as a target for religious reasons, and shared with the soldiers a desire for the sack and pillage of a very rich city that appeared to be an easy target. All that happened is not surprising when one considers that the imperial army, and even more so, the Frunsberg soldiers, were led by the idea of a violent crusade against the Pope. In front of Castle San Angelo, and witnessed by the Pope himself, a parody of a religious procession was staged, calling on Clement to hand over to Luther the sails and the oars of the Navicella, the so-called Peter's boat. The soldiers chanted, Long live Luther Pontifex. In derision, Luther's name was carved into the fresco, La Disputa Santissimo Sacramento. After the Protestant revolt gained sufficient momentum in Europe, it was primarily the northern nations of Europe that became Protestant. A series of battles and wars followed. Although these wars had various political and economic dynamics, they are known as the European Wars of Religion. In most cases, the battles and wars were between Protestant forces and Catholic forces. The Church wanted to recapture and reconquer the Protestant countries and bring them back into the covenant with God. It's hard not to underemphasize the profound impact the Protestant Revolt in the series of religious wars had on the Catholic faith in Europe. The European Wars on Religion were a series of religious wars waged in Europe from 1524 to 1648, following the onset of the Protestant Reformation in Central, Western, and Northern Europe. Although sometimes unconnected, all of these wars were strongly influenced by the religious change of the period and the conflict and rivalry that it produced. Martin Luther himself, a priest who renounced his ordination, married a woman named Katie von Bora, who was herself a, a professed religious who renounced her, her consecration. They had six children together. One of the Luther's children, Elizabeth, died when she was still an infant. Between bearing six children, Hans, June 1526, and Elizabeth, who was born the 10th of December 1527, who died within a few months. And then finally, it's worth noting that Martin Luther led the rebellion against the Catholic Church. He was successful in converting princes and other heads of state in European countries to join his rebellion. However, it wasn't long after Luther started the process of rebellion against authority that he himself was rebelled against. Many new Protestant rebels rose to power, challenging many of Luther's ideas and further dividing the Protestant movement. In contrast to the views of John Calvin, throughout his life, Luther maintained that it was not false doctrine to believe that a Christian soul sleeps after it's separated from the body at death. The theologians, including Zwingli, differed on the significance of the words spoken by Jesus at the Last Supper. According to, to transcripts, the debate sometimes became confrontational. Citing Jesus' words, The flesh profiteth nothing, Zwingli said, This passage breaks your neck. Don't be too proud, Luther retorted. Germans' necks don't break that easily.
Now that we have accounted the Old Testament story of Jeroboam and the New Testament story of Martin Luther, we are ready to see the way that Jeroboam prefigured Martin Luther and how they both split apart God's people. Jeroboam led a rebellion of the ten tribes of Israel against the tribe of Judah and the Davidic kingdom. Jeroboam went before King Reboam to ask if he would lessen the burden that King Solomon put upon the people for the purpose of building the temple. Martin Luther led a rebellion against the church, and particularly the papacy and the hierarchy of the church. Martin Luther decried that indulgences were being sold, and that they were being sold to raise money to build St. Peter's Basilica. Jeroboam wanted to stop Israelites from going to the temple to offer sacrifice. He erected two golden calves in his kingdom so that people would worship them instead of going to offer sacrifice in Jerusalem. Jeroboam also created a new feast day for the Israelites to celebrate that was distinct and different from the feast days of the covenant. The feast day was on the 15th day of the eighth month. And finally, Jeroboam instituted new religious leaders and he stopped the institution of the, Levit of the Levitical priesthood. Martin Luther was insistent that the Mass was not a sacrifice, and in Protestant countries the Mass was outlawed. He knew that if he could get Christians to abandon the Mass, they would abandon their Catholic faith. Martin Luther instituted two new primary doctrines, sola fide and sola scriptura. They acted as a substitute theology in place of the Catholic faith. Reformation Day is celebrated on October 31st the day that Luther nailed his 95 theses to the door. This is a new and distinctly Protestant feast day. It just so happens that if you find the 15th day of the 8th month on a Jewish calendar, it coincides with late October and early November. Thus the feast day instituted by Jeroboam and Reformation Day are practically on the same day. And finally, Luther stopped the institution of the priesthood through apostolic succession. Anyone could be a minister in Luther's religion without having to be ordained by a bishop. When Jeroboam fled from King Solomon, he sought the protection of King Shishak of Egypt. After Solomon's death, King Shishak came with an army and sacked the city of Jerusalem. He took priceless holy objects and other riches from the king's palace and from the temple. After the sacking, King Shishak left the city and it was returned to the king. Mutinous soldiers of Holy Roman Emperor Charles V, who were Protestant sympathizers, sacked the city of Rome in 1587. A great massacre occurred and many priceless historical treasures and a great amount of wealth was looted from St. Peter's Basilica and from the residences of the church hierarchy. The city was eventually given back to the church.
After the rebellion of Jeroboam and the splitting of the ten tribes of Israel, many wars and battles occurred between Judah and Israel. Certain kings of Judah sought to bring the ten tribes back into the covenant. After the rebellion of Luther and the Protestant revolt, many wars and battles were fought across Europe between Catholic forces and Protestant forces. At certain times, the wars were fought with the intention of conquering and turning the people back to the Catholic faith. Jeroboam and his wife suffered the loss of an infant child. Martin Luther and his wife, Katie von Bora, lost their infant child, Elizabeth, when she was only a couple of months old. Jeroboam was king over the ten tribes. However, it wasn't long before his lineage was completely wiped out. New lines of kings came and went over the history of the ten tribes of Israel. Martin Luther was the leader of the Protestant revolt. However, it wasn't long before his authority was challenged. New leaders emerged, like Calvin and Zwingli, who disputed Luther's theology and fractured the unity of the Protestant movement. 